Aerofoil Sim um, is a program used to uh, design aerofoils. Um, we're going to be using Foil Sim 3, student version 1.4D. Now, the, probably the easiest way to find this is just go to Google, type in NASA Foil Sim, make sure you haven't got the, um, the UK uh, option checked, and you should find it. Uh, on that page, Foil Sim 3, student version 1.4D beta. That's the one we're using. Uh, it might take a while to load because you'll have to have um, it needed to load Java. And once it's up and running, this is what it looks like. Um, you've got a screen here showing the flow in the top left hand corner. Um, you've got options here uh, streamlines, moving, frozen. Um, or the show the geometry and I'll just click streamlines. We can look at the edge, the top, a side side view in 3D. See on the side view you can see the cord here and the span is the actual length of it. The cord uh, is the um, from the from the leading edge to the trailing edge, it's that distance. And this is the direction of the flow. I'll go back to edge view. So edge view with streamlines. On the right hand side, the first thing we need to do is change from imperial units into metric. So use that pull down menu and click metric. Um, and now all, all the measurements will be in newtons and um, dimensions will be in meters. Now the three most important buttons you're going to use are flight, size and shape. Um, these three buttons here, flight, size and shape, are used to define the, um, the flight conditions or the flow conditions. The flight, we you start with the flight, um, the flight sets the airspeed the relative airspeed over the um, aerofoil. Here we've got 160 kilometers per hour. The altitude is the uh, the height of the aerofoil above ground level. Um, we can ignore that stuff down there for the time being. So the flight is the um, the flow conditions. The size of the aerofoil is, as we've just seen before cord and the span. Um, a quick look at remind of cord and span. Cord is this distance here from the front edge to the leading to the trailing edge. The span is the length of the aerofoil. Um, and that's measured in meters. If you want to change any of these um, you need to either use the so here, changing the cord makes it longer, or you can type the number into that box. So you set the, the cord and the span here, the area is then calculated, and the aspect ratio um, is a result. It's the um, span divided by the cord. As we can see in this diagram here, aspect ratio equals span divided by cord. That dimension divided by that dimension. Usually between 6 and 15 or thereabouts. The final uh, uh, final button is the shape button. The shape button is probably the, it's probably the most crucial. Uh, uh, there are three inputs on here. One is angle second one is camber, and the third one is thickness. So am angle, camber and thickness. Which angle? Let's have a look at that. The angle they're talking about is the angle of attack here. So it's the um, it's the angle between the horizontal here and the, the cord line. So it's the angle at which the aerofoil is tilted cord line goes from the leading edge, and it's a straight line, down to the trailing edge. It's the 
chord line and the horizontal line is that dotted line there and the angle is the angle between those two the camber is the is actually called maximum camber and you can see in this diagram it's this the, this other dashed line is drawn or should be drawn midway through the thickness of the aerofoil and you can see how it curves around to the trailing edge well the maximum distance between the between the camber line and the cord line is called the maximum camber and the maximum camber is sometimes just abbreviated to camber so that's the camber here the thickness uh, is as a percentage of the cord so 12 in this example the thickness is 12 percent of the cord so the maximum thickness there would be 12 percent of this dimension so the maximum thickness is 12% of the cord. And let's have a quick look at what happens. We've got zero camber at the moment, so we have a totally symmetric aerofoil. If I change that to a positive camber, you can see how, how the aerofoil gets uh, more curved. Reduce the, th reduce the thickness. Increase the angle. So you can see the flow going over the top. However, if the angle is too much, you'll see the flow separates here and we have turbulence. You want to try and avoid that. If that happens, you, you're generating too much drag um, because you've got turbulent air and it isn't flowing down over the top. And you'll also lose um, lift or downforce depending on what you're, what you're designing. So go choose choose it so you have you don't have separated flow. Now the results are shown in the right hand side. You've got the lift is shown here in newtons. The drag is in this box, and then you've got a few other parameters: um, Reynolds number and the lift drag ratio. But I think uh, the most important one you'll be using initially is the lift measured in newtons.